Hello, 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 hello. Welcome, my little degenerates. It's your boy, Mr. Degenerate, back at it again for another video. I know I've been gone for a little bit, but your boy, your boy needed to relax. Your boy needed to take the stress out of his bones, out of his will. All right. But while I was relaxing, we had to watch that goddamn Evo, man. Evo 2023. Oh my goodness. Uh, I was watching Say Jam's uh, video on Evo 2023, and my god, the participants for Evo is insane. The simple fact that we had so many people come from across the world to go to Evo this year. They said this was the biggest. Evo they've ever had and I think that contribute to a lot of people now feeling comfortable being around other people and of course this is the first year of a new Street Fighter game so everyone pulled up and my god Evo was just amazing like FGC we were eating good on Evo man we were eating so good we had great matches even though grand finals some of the grand finals we had a lot of mirror matches <laughs> in particular marvel versus capcom 3 uh remind us how cool the game is where you see shit that you never seen like i've never seen a fucking iron fist team before and that shit was fucking awesome but then the game then <laughs> then you had people's remind us why fucking Marvel vs. Capcom 3 is an annoying ass game because Zero May Cry took over the grand finals and it was ridiculous. Fucking, don't even get me started on, on fucking the top 8 of fucking Street Fighter 6. That was amazing. You know, shout outs to Takedo and Mana RD. Yo, yo, shout outs to the photographer, matter of fact. Fuck them. Shout out to the photographer who took this amazing ass shot. <laughs> like, so many good moments, so many greatness. Hell, we even got motherfuckers uh, giving the key, the mayor, giving the key to the city, to, to the Evo people, man. Like, and officially confirming Evo Day is coming. It's like, man, and I'm just, I'm just blown away by how far and how grand evo has become and so for me personally i, I just want to break down and cry how many how much people showed up how much love how much excitement there was for fucking <laughs> there was so much excitement for fucking garbage ass chipotle's <laughs> so much people was excited but i'm rambling on this is not what the video is for the video is recap all the announcements that were made at EVO 2023. So let's begin, Warriors. So to start things off, we gotta start things off with my favorite fighting game, bruh. We gotta start it off with some good ass Tekken, baby. So my, my king of Iron Fist, my, my Warriors, we need to rise up. Tekken fans, rise up. This is our moment. Uh, and so for EVO, they announced two characters. They announced the return of Raven, regular Raven, not Master Raven. The GOAT himself, Raven, the Master Ninja himself, um, and a new character, Queen of the Coffees, um, Akuzina is her name. Uh, I'm probably butchering that fucking name wrong, but I don't give a fuck. Um, and she is the Queen of the Coffees, and I have a lot to say on these characters, but before we begin all that bullshit, let's talk about the EVO panel. There was an EVO panel for Tekken 8. And there was a little bit of interesting tidbits that were thrown out. Um, they talked about the Wi-Fi um, and talked about how most people are playing the on wired instead of Wi-Fi. Um, they looked at the numbers and showed that a lot of people was playing on wired and was kind of saying wasn't trying to throw shade, but unintentionally threw shade at wireless players and was like hey i need to get on this fucking wireless shit me personally i love harada i love the man i know he be saying don't ask me for shit but i'm gonna just say it right now bro uh i don't give a fuck about wired all right i know wired leads to a better experience 
but not everyone's um, living condition, especially if you live in New York, has the ability to plug in a fucking wire into a uh, router and fucking play it from a wired position. All right, that's just impossible. I would love that. Personally, in my house, I would love that because it would just lead to better um, gaming experience. But that's just not how it fucking works uh, for majority of places. So, expecting a May release date or a March release date. So, they got time. But yeah, like let's not pretend that the that the online doesn't need some work. And so, no excuses on that. Uh, then they talked about their top eight characters that were played at the beta, um, and I'm not surprised at certain characters that was on there. I, I know Lilith was number eight. I was surprised um, Asuka was not anywhere on the list. I was even more surprised by um, June being in sixth place because that was a fan requested character for years, but that just goes to show you uh, how long that character's been out. That character has not been in, in a Tekken game since, again, maybe two, one? Like, we haven't seen her in a minute, so it was kind of like shocking, but not too shocking. At least the North Americans like really pulled up and supported your girl. Um, but the real shocker for me was seeing Harang at number three, like, Harang at fucking number three. I was like, what the fuck? And yeah, so that was kind of it for the panel. They also said they had like seven, seventy-seven thousand 77,000 participants. And some of that was literally just people buying the fucking codes online and just coming into the fucking beta. So that's kind of uh, interesting. Um, but overall, that panel was just interesting enough to, to talk about. But the real thing we got to talk about is the fucking reveal trailer. So we're going to talk about Raven first. Raven looks cool as fuck. Uh, I love the, the, the background, the, the, the stage. Uh, it looked like a dream S stage that had so many references to other Tekken stuff. I know I saw like um, Jin's um, like stage from Tekken 6. Uh, where he's sitting on the throne type of stage like I saw that mixed in there and it's got this really creepy vibe It has like a bunch of chains and a hand that's holding like uh, a, uh, One of the the gates yeah. But it's made into chains. I was like this is a sick ass um, um, Realm or whatever the fuck is taking place uh, But Raven looks fucking dope um, Surprisingly enough, I wasn't too excited, but I do like that he uses more of his shadow clones in his moves and his attacks. He just keeps popping out with new with new moves and whatnot. My man's been taking a day off and was like hitting the gym, all right? My man looked even more buff for some fucking reason, but he looked cool. I was very impressed. But then they had Akazina. Akazina, man. The hip-hop, zippity zop woman, coffee queen herself. Just skipping around, dipping. <laughs> she was fucking dope. Like, she reminded me of Steve Fox mixed with Lucky Chloe. And she just looked really cool. I, I, she was my most, like, happy to see. Like, Raven was fine. Aquazina was fucking awesome. Like, I just love her, her energy. <laughs> Uh, that's what happens when you a fucking caffeine level. You just keep bopping around and zipping around like like she has OCD. Like I love her. But one of the things they talked about is that she would have a different stance and this stance will not allow you to block, but it will allow you to auto dodge low, mid, and high attacks and then you can counter. So I think that's kind of cool. I'm curious on how the balancing for that is going to work, but I'm assuming she's not going to hit that hard. I do also like how she and Lilith have an argument about fucking coffee versus tea. That's the age-old discussion, the age-old um, rivalry. Is tea better than coffee? Me personally, I grew up with, um, with tea, so I'm going to stick with Lily on this one, but I have gotten into coffee. Coffee is really fucking great, all right? If you have not had coffee, get some coffee in your system. Uh, she owns, uh, Aquasina owns a fucking coffee place. Um, 
So that's kind of cool. That's kind of cool about her character. I did like the second part of her stage where you get knocked down, knocked down into like this um, like sorcery type chamber with a bunch of skulls. And if you hit somebody into the skulls, like spirits will start going around the um, the the arena. Cool. I'm looking forward to this character. I'm looking forward to seeing more. I know this was a leak. Um, the leak is basically, I think, confirms that the leak is true. So, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing other characters. Can't wait to see my boy Steve Fox. But yeah, uh, on a side note, something interesting that happened on the pan uh, on the stage when they was announcing these characters. Ono-san popped up. The GOAT himself, regardless of how you feel about Ono, Ono had basically revitalized um, Street Fighter in a lot of ways. So we owe a lot of respect to Ono. So Ono pops up and he's like, takes the mic and he's like, yo, you, you promised something, all right? You owed us something. And, you know, we're all like, what do you owe us? And he was about to say Tech and Cross Street Fighter and... And they were like, yo, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> it was so funny because up to this day, I still think if the Tekken team had done Tekken Cross Street Fighter, it would have been fucking amazing. But nevertheless, uh, the that never came to true. Hopefully one day we can revisit that idea. So thank you, Ono, for reminding us that the dream is not dead. Hopefully we can get it one day. I'm still praying. I'm still praying. <laughs> Next, we're going to talk about that MK1 trailer. And oh boy, before I even begin, let me just start off by saying whoever came up with the idea for Will It Kill was a really cool idea. So before the trailer started, they played a little game set called Will It Kill, and basically is will this combo instantly kill somebody. Um, and it was so much fun seeing the crowd's reaction, and even I played along, I was like, this move should kill. And it was a great way to show whether you knew the, the game, like how well do you know this game. And also it really did a great job at introducing Reptile uh, because as a reptile player, I knew that combo was gonna kill and then Tyver Duran um, came out to, to do that spot and then he was like, hey, you wanna see more more reptile? And I was like, what the fuck? We're gonna show reptile? And then the trailer starts and we see motherfucking reptile and holy shit, reptile is fucking hot. <laughs> My man got the tattoos on his face and he just looks good. Like, what is with what is with Netherrealm making all the men in this game look hot now? <laughs> Reptile looks good. No homo, but Reptile looks really cool. I love that they combined his his human form in in the game with his fucking lizard um, reptile form together. And the story behind that is that he's the only one in his clan that can shapeshift into a human so he's ostracized from his clan from that i love that that's really an idea and i just love his animation this is how beast boy should be if they ever do injustice 3 this is how beast boy should be like just transforming all parts of his uh, arms and legs into um his lizard form he does an air combo and then he dashes out of screen and then slice down and comes down as the fucking um the lizard it's insane it looks fucking insane i was like this is this is my goat as someone who played him in mkx that was like kind of like my secondary character next to come kalau to see him realize like this was really fucking cool and then they showed off ashra and i gotta be honest with you I gotta be honest with all you fuckers, and I've noticed this online that a lot of people are bashing people for not knowing who these 3D era characters are, and I just got a very hot take for fuckers, alright? Are you ready for this one? This one's gonna, gonna bleed your asshole, alright? The MK 3D era characters were always irrelevant and was forgotten relics of 
pass. Let me repeat that for the people in the back that can't hear. The MK 3D era characters were irrelevant and forgettable. I'm seeing a lot of people online bashing people for not knowing who the fuck these characters are, gatekeeping, and all that bullshit. Y'all need to chill the fuck out and calm the fuck down with that bullshit because let's be real, none of these characters, maybe besides Havoc, are, was recognizable back in the day, okay? And this is coming from someone who grew up. I grew up with the 3D era of Mortal Kombat. Yeah, my, my first Mortal Kombat was MK3, but I grew up in the 3D era and I've always came to the 3D era because that was a game that, that did so much. It had so much content for those who wasn't even weren't even huge big into fighting game it just had so much content so i have fond memories of the 3d era hell i was able to pick out lee may the moment i saw her because of the kick move and because back in the day and i don't know if people remember listen young bloods all right um our our women our women back then we used to get them halfway naked all right, and Lime has some big ass titties and whatnot. You know, she she was packing. All right, but she had this wonky ass fucking dash punch, air punch, and it was weird. But there's some characters in here when they announced them, I was like, "Who the fuck are you?" And Ashra was one of them. I was like, "Wait a minute, who are you?" And I know the the fucking trailer. Somebody would be like, "I'm Ashra," or "I'm Lime," or whatever. But the simple fact is. Those characters were never that popular. If they were so popular as you guys claim they were, why is it that we're now getting reintroductories to these characters? You know, why are we now getting that? And that's because they were never fucking popular. Besides Havoc, and that's because Havoc was teased throughout all of the, the reboot trilogy. Like, he was irrelevant. You know, none of these characters were relevant. So I, I just, I just hate the bashing. I saw it a lot on Twitter. The only the only reaction that I actually got a little choked up when I saw it on Twitter was um Lost Girl's reaction to As Asura, Asura. Like that reaction was generally humble and beautiful because you know, this is the first time we're seeing these characters get reimagining and some of these characters and this is a critique I have of of Asura is that some of these characters are re introduce and they look nothing like their 3d era part and it is so wild that that we are seeing these characters get reinterpreted reimagined and it's so beautiful so to see that reaction and she said that she she broke with the character with her brother and whatnot see that get realized and seeing her reaction was beautiful so off ashra looked fucking sick that's all I'm gonna say. She looks fucking sick. I love her her angel wings near the end of the trailer. She gets angel wings. I love that she has the black eyes. She looks creepy, but but based off of her story, she's trying to be a good person and redeem herself and be basically taken up to the heavens. And I think that's so beautiful, you know? I My only critique of her was the hat, she's missing the hat, but we know if you watch the trailer uh, multiple times like I have, um, she has the hat uh, in the trailer. Uh, in one of the cutscenes, she has a hat on, so it's there, but to me, that's iconic, and I think people would have recognized her more if she had the hat on and took it off in mid battle. So, you know, that's, that's cool, but she looked cool, but of course, we can't talk, we can't, we can't have this, this conversation without talking about my boy. The GOAT, the man, the myth, the legend, Havoc, pulling up, and Havoc is just creepy as fuck. He is like a fucking walking corpse, just beating your ass. He rips off his fucking hand uh, and is beating you with it. He's tearing off his jaw and like, and his intestines coming out. He's gonna be a monetized hell. If you're gonna try and play this character on YouTube, he is just so fucking cool. Like every shout outs to another realm, bro, for this. He looks so fucking amazing. Oh my god. And his fatal uh his fatal blow his fatal blow. Oh my goodness, that's some brutal ass shit. And then they shut off um Sabrina uh for as a 
cameo fighter. I'm so disappointed she's a cameo fighter, and that goes into another complaint I have about this shit, is some of these cameo fighters are just like, some of them are cool, but others are just like, why the fuck are you a cameo? Like, I still think the fucking um, robots um, should not be cameo fighters. Like, the Cyborg Ninja should not be cameo fighters. Like, come on, man. We, we asked for these characters to be in the game for so long and now they're they're just cameo fighters like that's ridiculous and now Serena is like is a cameo fighter herself and say like, oh no and she looks sick too that I'm very hit or miss on cameo fighters if I'm being honest but I need to play the game I've heard from a few people if you play the game you'll see how important the cameo system is so we'll see but Overall, this trailer was just fucking amazing. Like, just seeing these characters get realized the way how they were realized was just so amazing, so beautiful. And once again, this game is looking great. Again, uh, you could pre order the game right now and you could go get early access to the beta. The beta starts on the 18th to the 21st. So, get on that, guys. Get on that. So, next we have Street Fighter 6. Street Fighter 6 also had a panel. And Street Fighter 6 panel was pretty cool. It was the producers and everybody talking about Street Fighter 6, how certain elements were done and whatnot. Just a cool breeze of a, of a panel. They didn't really announce much. Uh, they did play a little game with the fans, figuring out what's the frame data of certain characters. Do you know how much, what's, if this is plus or minus on block? And if you won, you got a prize. It was cute. It was a cute little panel. But the main thing I took out of the panel was the previews for the upcoming um, Costume Pack 3. So, I gotta say, the costumes look really fucking dope. Like, they they put their, they put a lot of heart into these costumes. Uh, first of all, for you jury fans, you're gonna fucking love her costume. Uh, you, if you wanted to smell them feet, ooh, buddy, you're gonna smell and sniff and lick up on her feet because she's wearing like this this fully beanie costume, and it looks so cute. But her feet is showing too, so I'm like, oh lord, here we go. <laughs> uh, you feet fuckers are gonna be having a field day, but her costume was sick. Guile looks like he owns a fucking ranch. The most shocking shit is his hair. And it's like, what the fuck did you guys do with his hair? But it looks cool. He looks like he owns a ranch and he's about to hustle down some fucking... He looks like he's gonna just, like, flash kick fucking bulls and shit to get him on the ranch. Um, my boy DJ, my man, came out of Miami Vice, baby. <laughs> he looks really fucking cool. And I really love his energy in the game so seeing him in a, in a suit that reminds me of miami vice like vice city type of style like 70s los angeles type of clothing like really cool um he looks dope as fuck and last but not least last but certainly lastly marissa my girl the sweetheart has this her hair is like in oh, the fucking helmet of um uh, Spartan helmet, but she's wearing a, a wedding dress and it looks so beautiful. I'm like, oh, this makes me want to fucking play her even more. I, now, I'm very curious is Marissa the type? And I didn't play the story mode, and I'll probably play this. I gotta play the story more mode. Uh, but is Marissa trying to get married? <laughs> like, like, is she trying to get white stuff? Right, don't worry, Marissa. I'll, I'll wife you, baby girl. I'm with you. I'm with you, man. We all try to find love out here. All right? It's hard on these streets. Uh, especially with a big girl like you. But I'll take you. It's all right, baby girl. But yeah, like... <laughs> but yeah, like... These costumes look amazingly good. Shout out to CatCon. And they, this is just so far what they had to show. So, And we didn't even see the main actual gameplay or anything. But I can't wait to see the rest of everybody's costume. Especially Cammy's. Cause I'm a candy player, so I can't wait to see her. Then we had grand finals and and the top eight. And top eight, they started playing like some Street Fighter music. Uh, they started playing certain characters' themes. 
And I gotta admit, some of those themes that they were playing, they did a remix version of them. I'm like, damn, those shits are better than the fucking main game. Like, Luke's theme that they played sounded hype as fuck. Like, it got you ready for a fight. And I'm like, oh my goodness. And then halfway through, they started playing fucking TMNT Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle song, original song that they made. And I'm like, what the fuck? I was like, that was, it was so r fucking random. It was so bizarre. We were like, what the fuck is going on? And then all of a sudden, they announced that fucking Street Fighter is going to have a collaboration with fucking... TMNT Teen and Mutant Ninja Turtles, and you can get for your avatar, you can get the costumes of the TMNT Turtles. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, that is so fucking rad. And then they have emotes and just cool little little shit in there for, for you guys. And then they have like an illustration, this, this cool ass illustration. And then they also have the soundtrack. They have a, a custom owned soundtrack for, for the Teenage Mutant Turtles in this. And it was fucking dope. I was like, this shit is amazingly good. I was like, oh my goodness, this is amazing. And then I found out the price. And the price is $15 for, for one costume. And I'm like, oh fuck no. So if you want all the turtles, you best, you best either fucking ask your mom for a wallet, you better fucking steal her wallet, you better go beat up a friend, alright, cause 15 for all those costumes are ridiculous, so you best just go pick your favorite turtle and call it a fucking day, like I'm gonna probably just buy uh, Mikey, Michelangelo, and call it a fucking day, and I'm like, that is it, or if they had Shredder, I would get the Shredder outfit and call it a fucking day, uh, other than that, it was pretty dope, it was pretty, um, a dope announcement, and I want to see more of announcements like this like collaborations but these prices we got to do something about these prices especially since i'm not a huge fan of how they've been handling the uh, battle pass i'm not a huge fan of the battle pass strategy but you know it works but again these costumes aren't even going to be for your main for for the main characters these are for your avatar, so I don't know why they're so expensive, but whatever. Then they showed off Aki. Um, they actually showed off the World Tour uh, introduction to Aki. And she's like, hey, you know, you want to take some of these fucking pills? Like, she's like holding the, 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 the fucking cocaine or the Smith, the Smith, the MJ, all right, and about to give you some. And you take it like a fucking idiot, or she's like shoving it down your throat, and she's like, yo, like, hey, now your fucking arteries and shit's gonna shut, shut down, and you're like, what the fuck? She is really creepy. I love her vibe, but like, I love that she's just a creepy, creepy fucking woman. <laughs> I'm feeling her vibe. Uh, and I thought Jury was fucking crazy, but now nah, this is way more crazy. Like, I fuck with her a lot. So, overall, I think she looks cool. It ain't showing any gameplay. She's coming out somewhere in the fall. She looks cool. However, I think my only critique is her hair. Like, I'm just not a huge fan of her hair. But, we'll see how she plays. A lot of people say she's gonna kinda be like the Fong, Fang or Fong of the game. Where she's just throwing poison at you. So, we'll see how it goes. And then we have Guilty Gear. Now, Guilty Gear, Guilty Gear Shrive. We're going into Season 3, and before we went into that, they talked about how the game has made 2.5 million players globally. And that's great. I'm glad that Guilty Gear is getting all this love and support. I know a lot of people in the community do not like how Guilty Gear um, Shrive has turned out because of how casually or dumbed down the game is. But I look at how well it's doing and it really, and I really am happy for it for doing well because now more people has gotten into the franchise. So that means when we get the next game, we can go fucking buck wild and crazy with mechanics and whatnot. Because it seems like now we're going, we're going into the era of like fighting games where it's like now we're getting more complex shit. Because Street Fighter 6 is very complex on so, uh, some of the shit that it allows you to do. 
So it was great to see that uh, they announced uh, season three and they showed off uh, not only will season three come with a brand new character, Johnny, uh, a fan favorite. Johnny got the slick back hair, my man, a little ripped as fuck. I'm trying to be like him when I grow up. Johnny looks fucking sick. Uh, but yeah, Johnny looks fucking awesome. <laughs> um, and he now doesn't do the coins. He uses his card, the card, so he throws them out. And I guess they do extra damage or leave um, more slicing abilities. Not too sure. There's going to be a breakdown on it. But I really, really fuck with Johnny. But the most coolest part, surprisingly for me, wasn't even Johnny. It was the announcement that we're getting not only balance patch uh, for characters, but we're fucking getting characters have new moves, new offense and defensive mechanics. We have one uh, mechanic that allows you to um, fucking basically drive rush a motherfucker. And I was like, whoa, that's incredible. That's kind of cool. And then we have another mechanic that has push block. And I'm like, what? And then characters are getting new moves. Uh, I know people lost their fucking minds in the audience when May pulled out the dolphin and she could jump cancel out of the dolphin. <laughs> I know people were losing their mind. <laughs> but it's all good. Uh, I'm really happy that we're getting more content for this game. It, it starts on the 24th of this month. So get yourself prepared. Season 3 is about to begin. And once again, shout outs to Arc System Works for making it so far with Guilty Gear Shrive. So for this next part, we're just going to wrap these all in one. Because they're kind of short and I don't have that much to say on them. So the first thing off, we're going to talk about that SMK, a.k.a. That Fatal Fury, aka Garo 2, aka Fatal Fury City of the Wolves. Well, you gotta say it like them. You gotta say it. City of the Wolves. Shit sounds fucking sick. That's a cool ass title. I'm digging it so far. I like the 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 art style, yeah, it looks more of the same, but it now has that like Marvel vs. Capcom shell shaded look. And like, I noticed like Terry's hair is like moving and shit now, so it's more realistic. So they're getting better. SNK is getting better. Uh, I do like in the trailer they were showing off different places uh, of where um, different stages and where you'll be fighting at, so that was kind of cool. Um, other than that, there's not much to really say on it, and that's all I'm gonna really say. I'm excited for this, though. I think this is gonna be my first SNK game I'm gonna try and actually sit and play and enjoy. I'm very curious if what are they gonna do in terms of single player content. Like, that's my stick, so I hope they're gonna be doing something very interesting with it. Before we get out of SNK, they also had um, two DLC characters to announce for. King of Fighters 15, uh, which is Nod and Duelong. Like, those were the two characters they announced. Um, Nod is, is out right now, so you can go play her. But Duelong comes out in the fall, so check him out when he is available. Don't really care about King of Fighters 15. Uh, it doesn't speak to me, so... It is what it is. Garo, Mark of the Wolves, too, does, though. So, we'll, we'll see when we get there. Next, but not least, we had Project L show off Yasuro. Um, and he just looks like Virgil on steroids. He looks so fucking cool. Like, this is going to be my day one character. Uh, he was at um, Evo, and people were playing the game. And the game just looks absolutely beautiful gorgeous and absolutely fucking great um no word on release date but Mitsuro looks fucking dope and i know that there's more of this game that they have to show off but i'm waiting patiently i want a release date i want i want an actual name for the fucking game we can't just keep calling it project l and it feels like the game is a long away but i have faith that this game is gonna be a fucking dope ass game uh i'm looking forward to this a lot 
However, because it's, it's League of Legends, uh, and I'm not really into League of Legends, but I love Arcane. Arcane was the shit, so we definitely will see how this goes. Definitely. Then we had Underknife in Birth 2. Uh, what can I say? I've never played the first game. I own it, but I've never played the first game. So when I saw this announcement, I was like, oh shit, this is a perfect time to jump on to Un Undernight. So I'm looking, I'm looking forward to playing this. Although I thought this was going to be a huge leap. This just seems like more of the same. Um, maybe when the game comes out, you know, it'll probably have new mechanics and whatnot. But this just looks like a, an expansion pack for um, Undernight and not a, like a real sequel sequel. But I'm not into i don't know much about this franchise so i don't know the last thing i know is uh bb tag they were in bb tag so you know it's interesting but you know i will definitely be trying to check it out more i didn't know any of the characters or whatnot i recognized them through bb tag but i was like i don't really know anybody that i would be interested but Again, it's the perfect time to get in. Not a lot of people's gonna know these characters uh, or know the game, and the game's probably gonna play different. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this goes. Last but not certainly not least, oh man, this one's gonna go into a little rant. So please forgive me. They announced Killer Instinct is gonna have a balance patch after 10 years. They're finally doing a balance patch. It's the 10 year anniversary patch that's going to rebalance the game. And let me first start off on the positive. I love how they were able to announce this um, at a basically a PlayStation event now because PlayStation owns Evo. So it was cool to see that relationship. I don't know how they were able to make that happen between Microsoft and Sony. But to see that they made it happen was really nice. Um, I kn I'm very glad. And it also showed that Nintendo is a bunch of bitches. And that if Sony and Microsoft can do something, even though Sony bitches and complains about Microsoft taking over Activision and then coming to an agreement to do this, it was so bullshit that so Nintendo hasn't done any of this. You know, it's so weird that Nintendo would not allow Smash to be on EVO. But that's neither here nor there, and this year proved that we don't really need Smash, but it would be nice to have Smash. Well, all that being said, I gotta be honest about this, and, you know, I, it was cool to see Max's reaction. Like, like, I know Max, I watched his, um, his stream when he was streaming it. And he was like excited, and he and he played it. He played it off really well. He kept that shit from all of us. All of a sudden, he was like, "Yo, I'll be back." And then I saw him on the screen on Evo. I'm like, "What the fuck?" And I'm like, "I knew something was up, but I didn't really say anything." And to see him excited, see all the the community excited, I'm I'm happy for y'all guys. But I gotta be the most realistic motherfucker. And this is maybe because I'm not I'm not huge into Killer Instinct, but. I felt like this announcement was a waste of fucking time. Like, I feel like this should have been announced for like five years ago or so. Ten years later, we're now getting a update. At that point, you might as well have just announced Killer Instinct 2. Like, I, I just don't understand the the bewilderness by um, Xbox. Um, this was a really, really weird decision. Like, I would have just said, nah, you guys are not getting a, uh, getting an update. Y'all are getting a fucking, uh, uh, another game, alright? Like, I, I just, I just feel like there should have been more. There should have been more. Just a, a balanced update for characters and whatnot. I'm like, that's great and all. It's probably gonna bring in a few newcomers, but... A brand new game is going to bring in a massive amount of people. And this is the perfect time to strike. We have Street Fighter 6. We have fucking Tekken. We got Mortal Kombat. The big three hitters are back in big and bold ways. Like, Mortal Kombat's coming in big and bold new direction. We're doing uh, Tekken. It's going to be more of a fucking um, uh, aggressive play. Big, bold, 
new direction for for Tekken. You know, Street Fighter VI takes huge risk and has so much mechanics and all that, and it's doing big shit. Killer Instinct needed to come up and, and really have something to say. And I just feel like they didn't they didn't do anything. They just kind of like here's a balance patch for a ten year old game, and it's like. I feel like the Killer Instinct community deserve more. I, maybe just me. Maybe I'm I'm like going a little too hard. Maybe this is what they want, and they're the Killer Instinct fans are completely fine. But to me, I'm this isn't gonna do much to entice people to play it. I feel like this is only for the hardcore fans, and I really think a new game would have really piqued a lot of people's interest. Because especially since we waited so they waited so long for a new game. And I'm tired of I'm tired of Microsoft saying oh, and Phil Spencer saying, well, we don't have a studio to do it, motherfucker. You're one of the richest companies of all time. You literally bought fucking Activision. Get one of the fucking studios that you own. You have all these incredible studios. You mean to tell me none of them, nobody in in, in all of all you own, Microsoft, can fucking do a fighting game? Come on, you can't even outsource it to fucking. Iron Galaxy, or at least, or at least somebody else like Bandai Namco, like give it to Arxis, somebody. I know you can't give it to Capcom because Capcom got their hands full and they're they're in they're in the recession right now. They're kind of like now back on the book drawing board, so we'll see. But I don't know. I just I just kind of was like, this is this is silly. Ugh. I was like, ugh. And at first. I didn't really have nothing to say about Grand Blue Fantasy Versus uh, because let's face it, the 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 game is kind of at this point, you know, if you're a Grand Blue fan, um, then you're gonna play this. If not, it's whatever. But one of the things that piqued my interest so much is that there's gonna be a free, uh, like a corner fighter free to play version of the game where there's four characters you get to play with. You could go online with your friends, and it has the story mode for chapter one or uh, act one of the story mode and you can play this shit for free and this to me is how you get people back invested in this game after the kind of lackluster um game this has um but it's great to see that it's getting supportive it's great to see that it's it thought outside of the box this is a great way to get people in there and try this game out i wish more developers would do this so shout outs to them for doing this shit, man. And the community's been very strong and they hold on. Now, hopefully, they get rollback. The rollback netcode is amazing and whatnot. And they can really push this game hard. Because this shit looks fucking fantastic. And I'm very proud that they that they stuck with it and you know has a free-to-play model now to allow people to get into the game. Although they're gonna get fucking demolished. Because everybody who played the game is already knows what the fuck they're doing, but it is what it is. And with all that being said, let me just say this: uh, Evo was amazing. I love that the fighting game community is growing, and we're getting bigger, better, and more bold. I love that we got an Evo day. I love that we got the keys to Las Vegas. I'm just so proud of how far Evo's come and you know it makes me want to go to Evo even more like this is now that I've gotten a little taste of traveling I, I kind of definitely want to go to um, Evo Las Vegas to fucking actually celebrate Evo like Evo's the shit and I think this is so great can't wait for next year you know it's gonna be fucking wild gonna be amazing we're gonna have fucking probably tech and Tekken 8, oh, fucking Street Fighter 6 is going to be almost near the end of Season 1, and, you know, we got Mortal Kombat, man, it's, it's going to be amazing, and then whatever other fighting game is going to get announced, you know, and the sky's the limit, man, the sky's the limit on what we can see, and I'm so happy, so proud of all the developers and everybody who came out EVO. Uh, if it's your first time watching EVO, I hope you enjoyed yourself. If you're new to my channel, I hope you enjoyed the video. But if you could do me a favor, I hate begging. I hate being a begging bitch. But if you can like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Let me know your favorite EVO moment, your favorite EVO news. 
in the comment section below. Until next time, my little degenerates, stay safe and have a good one. And also, never forget, keep playing some more fighting games, even if you're trash at them like me. <laughs>